Hello again. A very warm welcome to runway this morning. In about 25 minutes' time, one of our three contestants here will be sitting on the runway waiting to take off. That's all to come. Let's first of all check out their passport details. <laughs> And let's begin this morning with Harvey Salmon, whose passport tells us that he comes from Greenwich. You're an actor by occupation, Harvey, and you were born in Haywards Heath in Sussex. What kind of acting do you mostly do? Well, I've really mainly specialised in uh, classical acting up to now, Shakespeare, Bernard Shaw, and Restoration Comedy. You have the voice for it, sir. Now, you're not married, but you have a girlfriend who I, I gather you haven't seen for about seven years because she's in Canada. Well, in fact, it was eight years. I met her when I went over to Canada on the boat. And uh, just a few weeks ago, she came over from France to stay with me, a reunion after eight years. And was it as wonderful as you'd hoped? Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Champagne in the works. Smashing. Thank you, Harvey. Let's move across now to Maureen. Maureen Oliver. Now, you live in Wellington in Shropshire, and you're a housewife by occupation, and you were born in Southgate, Middlesex. Now, occasionally, Maureen, my wife and I are having a really good nervous breakdown because we have four children, but you actually have six. That's right, yes. Oh, I sympathise. What, what are the ages of them? Well, I'm not going to tell her exactly the ages, because I'll be giving away <laughs> your birth, wouldn't all I? All right, all right. But the, um, they, the, they span, they yes. span a various age yes. range, and it's hard work, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, we sympathise. But you're having a morning off this morning. Let's move across now to Granville Yates. Gran Yates, look at your passport, Gran. And we see that uh, you live in Bolton in Lancashire. You're a mathematics teacher, a retired mathematics teacher, and you were born in Bolton, Lancashire. Right. Why do you, why do you think, Graham, that, that so many of us look back on our years doing maths at school with such horror and hatred? I mean, I, I couldn't stand that. Well, I think it's because uh, you have to do a lot of written work. There's no way that you can sit and just listen. You have to write. That's very true. But I hear that you were an extremely talented maths teacher. Graham, well, thank you very much. Those are our three contestants. As you have probably noticed before, we didn't actually see their dates of birth on their passports. That's because it's the subject of our first round, the passport round. I'll be asking you all to guess each other's year of birth and also to answer questions on your own year of birth. So we're going to start, first of all, with you, Harvey. And let's see the photograph that you brought along with you, taken from the family album. <laughs> You've lost weight since then. <laughs> you, I think you, you showed an early aptitude for Winston Churchill impressions in that one, Harvey. <laughs> That's the one. You look very sweet. And we have the copy of the newspaper. This is the, the Evening Standard that was actually published on the very day that uh, you were born. Let's have a look at some of the cuttings. It was the Evening Standard, as I say, and it reported that a new John Mortimer play was soon to open in the West End. Two stars for comfort was to star Trevor Howard and Isabel Dean. All right, there's a clue. For Maureen, what year do you think that Harvey was born in? I think he's um, more youthful looking. Um, Go on. Older than I, than I first thought. I'll say um, 1961. 1961. And a compliment as well. Granville. Well, I, I agree. I, I think uh, 1963. 1963. Harvey? Well, you were both one year out. It's in fact 1962, which makes me a very youthful 26. <laughs> youthful indeed. And you both got very close. So you both get two points. All right, now three questions for you, Harvey, on your year of birth, 1962. Which architect designed the new Coventry Cathedral, which was consecrated in May of that year? Um, I don't know, I'm afraid. All right, anyone for a bonus? No, it was Sir Basil Spence. Your next question on 1962, Harvey. Which island was blockaded in that year after missile launching sites were spotted there? Cuba. Correct, two points. Which U.S. representative to the United Nations who died in 1962 was the widow of an American president? Um, Worth a guess? Mrs. Roosevelt? Yes, it was a guess. You got it right. Eleanor Roosevelt. Well done. Let us now move across to Maureen. I love this part of the show and see the picture that you brought with you this morning. Ah. Uh, what's happened to your glasses, Maureen? Long gone. <laughs> <laughs> are, you are you wearing the old... Uh, no. Con no? No. You, you just grew out of them. Oh, that's mm -hmm. nice. And let's have a look at the newspaper that was published on the day that you were born. This is the Daily Sketch. And Maureen wasn't the only arrival on this Saturday, as the Premier, Winston Churchill, had just returned from Turkey and Cyprus, while Casablanca with Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman was enjoying huge acclaim in the London cinemas. All right, Granville, what year do you think that Maureen was born in? Mm, uh... Most difficult, most difficult. Uh, Go on. 1938. 1938. Harvey, would you like to have a guess? Uh, 1943. 1943. Maureen, please don't insult Granville in return. Just tell us what year it was. <laughs> it was 1943. Absolutely. You were. Bang on, Harvey. <laughs> it's 
So, Granville, I think you may have something to pay for a bit later on in the programme. <laughs> right, your three questions on 1943, Maureen. Which British-born actress appeared as a child with Roddy McDowell in Lassie Come Home? Petula Clark? No, it wasn't Petula Clark. Anybody for a bonus? Yes, yes Harvey. Uh, was it Elizabeth Taylor? It was Elizabeth Taylor. Good guess. Next question on 1943, Maureen. The woman who holds the record for winning the most Wimbledon titles was born at Long Beach on November the 22nd that year. Who is she? No. Maureen Connolly? Not Maureen Connolly. Yes, Granville? Billie Jean King. Bang on, sir. And your third question on 1943. Who commanded the U.S. 7th Army, which began the invasion of Sicily on July the 10th? No idea. No idea. Anyone else? Yes, Granville. Patton? Yes, General George Patton. Another bonus for you. Well done. All right, let's move across now to Granville. He's doing very well this morning. And let's look at a nice old photograph of the gentleman on the left. <laughs> what on earth are you dressed up as there? Oh, I was dressed as a, a baker of the day. Yes. Uh, well, you, I must say, you, you, you look very much in costume, and you've not changed a bit. Let's have a look at uh, the daily sketch of that particular day that you were born, Gran. One of the weeklies on sale while you were getting used to the outside world was Answers at One Penny. Amongst the paper attractions for that week was a magnificent free plate of the martyred heroine, nurse Edith Cavell. Now, there's another clue. So, Harvey, what year do you think that Granville was born in? Uh, 1919. 1919. Maureen? 1918. 1918. Go on, Granville. Thank you very much, both of you. <laughs> 1916. 1916. So, you were just closer, Maureen, so you get the two points. All right, three questions. I can call you Grand, can't I? Yes. Right. On your year, 1916, which Cheltenham-born composer completed his Planet Suite in 1916? Holtz. Gustav Holtz is right. Which river gave its name to the Great Battle of 1916, in which well over a million men were wounded or killed? Some. You're right, sir. And which Irish teacher led the volunteers who seized the Dublin Post Office in the 1916 Easter Rising? No idea. Anyone for a bonus? It was Patrick Pierce. Patrick Pierce. All right, that was a good round. Let's have a look at the scores at the end of it. Maureen four, Harvey eight, but Granville, you've done well. You've got ten. Well done. <laughs> so, on to round two we go to have a look at the departure boards. Right, and as Granville is in the lead, we're going to give him first bite at the departure board this morning. Let's have a look at your subject today, Granville. And we see that it's girls' names. Let's have the answers on the board, please. You know what you have to do? You have to match up my questions to those answers. It's multiple choice. Here's your first question, Granville. Neil Diamond had a hit with Sweet Who. Sweet Who. Have a quick guess. Charmaine? No, it wasn't Charmaine. Keep trying. Diana? No, it wasn't Diana. Oh, dear. I'll give you a little clue, I think. Think of an old commercial radio station, a pirate radio station. Sweet Caroline? Yes, there you go, Sweet Caroline. Next question. Which princess was the title of a Gilbert and Sullivan operetta? It's Ida. Absolutely. Which girl's name in song prefixes grey and daydream? Dolly. Absolutely right. Which Jane Austen heroine married Mr. Knightley? Emma. Is right again. Who of Green Gables is the title of a classic story for girls? Anne. Um. You are doing well. Which Dean is the title of a song and the narrator of Wuthering Heights? Nellie. Yes. And we see that Jean is the last name up on the board. So your question about Jean, Gran. Who wrote the novel The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie? Either you know or you don't. No, I'm afraid I'll have to tell you then. It was Muriel Spark, Muriel Spark. But you've done very well. You've got 12 points at the end of that round. Right, let's see how well you can do, Harvey. The subject of your departure board this morning is US cities. The answers, please. <laughs> Straightforward enough. Let's see if you can manage the questions. Johnny Duncan and the Bluegrass Boys were on the last train to where in 1957? Uh, Las Vegas. No, not Las Vegas. Last train to Go San Francisco. On, Not San Francisco. You're going to have to keep guessing. I'll give you the tune. Last train to. <laughs> Sorry about the singing. Have a guess. Sacramento. Not Sacramento, though. That was sort of close in terms of the phonetics. Oh, come on, Harvey. 
San Fernando. Yes, San Fernando. Oh, we're going to get going. Next question. Which city in Texas has a name which means yellow in Spanish? Uh, Laredo. Not Laredo. It means yellow in Spanish. Quick as you can, please. Amarillo? Amarillo is right. Near which Florida city is Walt Disney's World situated? Uh, Los Angeles. No, Florida city. Florida city. It's a Florida city that Walt Disney's World is situated near. Um, Only two left. Orlando. Yes, Orlando. Got there. And uh, finally, uh, we have Reno on the board. So a question about Reno. In which state is Reno? Texas. But quite close. Not right, though. It was Nevada. Nevada. So at the end of that round, you scored a perfectly respectable six points, Harvey. All right, Maureen, let's have a look at the subject on your departure board. Oh, it's politicians. Can we have the answers? politicians' names, etc. All right, are you ready for your first question? What was the former name of the African city of Harare? Salisbury. Correct. What is an American word for a bowler hat? Derby. Is right again. Who managed Liverpool Football Club when they first won the European Cup in 1977? Paisley. Correct. Which was the first team to retain the FA Cup in the 20th century? Liverpool. Not Liverpool, thought you might say that. Keep going. Newcastle? Yes, Newcastle. Which Scottish city is known as the Granite City? Aberdeen. Right again. The capital of Nova Scotia has the same name as a wool town in West Yorkshire. What is it? Halifax. Right. Which city lies at the northern end of the M6 motorway? Carlisle. Right again. And your question about Peel, for what fishy product is Peel in the Isle of Man noted? <laughs> a fishy question. Have a quick guess. Any idea? No, I no know. it's not caviar, it's kippers. Mm -hmm. Kippers. So you've got 14 points, Maureen. Well done, that's a good score. A quick runway round up of the scores now at the end of those rounds. Harvey, you've got 14, Maureen 18, but Granville in the lead with 22. <laughs> but of course, we have one departure board left to go. This is where they all go on the buzzer to see if they can beat each other to it. Of course, if you come in and you get it wrong in this particular round, I will have to take two points off you. But do get in early if you think you know what the answer is. Let's have a look at the subject for the group departure board. It's Animals, so the answers, please. There we are. All right, which is brew up there? Here's your first question. Which creature did Bill Haley say that he would see later? Harvey. Crocodile. No, not the crocodile. So, you, so two points away, Granville? Alligator. Alligator is the right answer. You were close, but no cigar. Right, the European monetary system is sometimes known as the what? Anybody know? Nobody wants to risk worth losing two points? All right, it's the snake, the snake. Next question. In the word brontosaurus, bronto means thunder. What does saurus mean? Granville. Lizard. Right. Which chorus sang with Paul McCartney on We All Stand Together? Maureen. Frog. Right. The Greek playwright Basilius is said to have been killed when an eagle dropped a what on his bald head? Granville. Tortoise. Right. Lascago won the Grand National in 1975. Harvey. Snail. Right again. The eye of which creature is part of the witch's, Harvey? Toad. No, it's not the toad, so two points go away, Granville. Ute. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so he got there, he gets the point, and in fact, I think we give another point to Maureen as well there, because it was the only answer left on the board, so either of them could have got that ready. So if we have a quick runway roundup of the scores at the end of that round, we see that, Harvey, you have 12, Maureen, you have 22, and Granville in the lead again with 30. <laughs> Right, we're going to give Harvey Moran and Granville a small break there because we're taking a small break in a couple of seconds. But first of all, a question just for you watching at home. Let's see what the subject is for you this morning. Aha, uh -huh, it's Portugal today. There we are. Question on Portugal for you. What in Portugal is tap? I shall tell you what it is after this short intermission. <laughs>
universal automatic. Now better than ever. Automatically. Will it be chips or jacket spuds? Will it be salad or frozen peas? Will it be mushrooms? Fried onion rings? You'll have to wait and see. Grill steaks from the Bird's Eye Steakhouse. Pure ground beef that you cook like a steak and serve like a steak. What do you give your old man with his steakhouse grill steak? Hope it's chips, it's chips. We hope it's chips. All beef grill steaks. Another sizzler from the Bird's Eye Steakhouse. This is Pony. It stands for product of Northern Ireland. And Pony means jobs for Northern Ireland. Start looking for quality goods and services with the Pony symbol. Buy these and you're supporting local employment. You're supporting your father's job, your mother's job, your sisters, brothers, sons and daughters' jobs. So buy quality goods and services with the Pony symbol and help keep the jobs at home. Pony, product of Northern Ireland. They got yogurt here. New hippo yard yogurt. Smooth and fruity, Rudy. Well, come on, dab in. See you later, alligator. New hippo yard from Shambosi. Come on, dab in. Favor Supermix, the all-in-one foods. No tins to open, no mixers required. Do your dog and cat a favor. Welcome back. Welcome back to part two of Runway. Now, the question I asked you before the break was, what in Portugal is tap? And if you went rummaging through your drinks cupboard looking for some of the stuff, you would have been sadly disappointed. It's the state airline, the state airline in Portugal. Right, on to our deciding round now for Harvey, Morin and Granville. This is our Dirty Tricks round. It's another buzzer round. You've got 15 questions to answer, and you'll see why we call it Dirty Tricks when we get started. Are you ready? Here's your first question. Which palace is the Archbishop of Canterbury's London home? Granville. Lambeth Palace. That's right. Now, you can either keep four points Climb. to yourself, we call that climbing, or you can Climb. knock it off Harvey and Maureen's score. We call that delaying. What are you going to do? Climb. You're climbing, he repeated. <laughs> he, knows his, he knows his onions, does Granville. All right, four points to you. <laughs> Which former singer won the Best Actress Oscar this year for Moonstruck? Harvey. Uh, Cher. Cher is right. Are you going to be a twine, or are you going to climb? I think I'm going to have to keep them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It gets nasty later on in the game. Who has owned... Kay, I beg your pardon, Kayasi, Sharastani, and Shergar, all Derby winners. Granville. Yeah, you can't. Right. What do you do? Climb. You climb, and that puts you on a threshold. So if you get another question right, you will win one of our prizes. Who's the only actor and playwright to appear on a Bank of England note? Harvey. William Shakespeare. Absolutely right, on the £20 note. What will you do? Um, stall Granville, I think. I so. hoped you would. He's going to delay Granville, so I'm sorry, Granville. Granville, you, uh, you go back from the threshold, back to 34. British Aerospace announced this year their wish to take over which car manufacturing firm from the state, Maureen? Oh, I was going to say Rolls-Royce. <laughs> no, it was the Rover Group, so four points go to Harvey and Granville, which puts Granville right back on a threshold for a duty-free prize. Who paid a divorce settlement of some $180,000 in February to Peter Holm, a Swedish former rock singer, Maureen? Joan Collins. You're right. What will you do? I'll climb. Up you go. What's the capital of Yugoslavia? <whistles> Harvey? Belgrade. Correct again. Do I detect a... Uh, take off Granville. Again. Yes, another dirty trick. Sorry, Granville, you've been yanked down again. <coughs> What's the second book of the Old Testament that follows Genesis? <whistles> Granville. Exodus. What are you going to do, Granville? Climb. <laughs> Back up to his threshold, will he get the prize? I wonder. What would be the abbreviation P cross N or P times N mean to a chess player? What would that abbreviation mean to a chess player? Granville. Pawn takes knight, climb. He's done it. I presume you'll climb. Yes. Right, you've gone through the threshold. You win a duty-free prize, which is a digital alarm clock and radio. Well done, Granville. <laughs> Next question. Who was the author of The Great Gatsby and Tender is the Night? Harvey. Scott Fitzgerald. Correct. What will you do? Um, I think I'll keep him. Yes, you're climbing. Five questions to go. F is the symbol for which chemical element? Harvey. Potassium. Not potassium. So four go to Maureen and Granville. The correct answer was fluorine. Fluorine. 
Right, you're on a threshold again, Granville, thanks to Harvey. He delayed you often enough, so we should pay for that. West End Girls, Heart, and Always On My Mind were number one hits, Harvey. Pet Shop Boys. That's right. Climb or delay? Ah, uh, delay. <laughs> He's done it again, Granville. Down you go, four points. Three questions to go. Who wrote the Just So stories and Puck of Pook's Hill? Granville. Rudyard Kipling. That is right, sir. I presume you'll climb. Climb. Yeah. Up you go. On the back of what? Oh, it's of course you're back on a threshold. On the back of what would you expect to see a howdah possibly carrying people? Granville? An elephant. Yes, absolutely right. Well done. You've gone straight up and you get yourself a carriage clock on 50 points. Well done, Granville. <laughs> He's very fast on the buzzer. There's just one question left, and I think it's a little bit academic, but I'll ask it anyway. Lionel, Ethel, and John, who were once known, Granville? Barrymore. Oh, as the royal family of Hollywood. Barrymore's right. Go on, climb. Climb. You're not going to take it off, are you? So he gets 54 points, and it makes it quite clear that at the end of that round, Granville has won. Well done. <laughs> I don't think he delayed anybody during that game, so honesty shone through in that particular round of dirty tricks. Harvey, all your dirty tricks didn't pay off. You couldn't stop him doing it. <laughs> Maureen, thank you for playing as well. You've both been great contestants. I'll tell you that uh, you don't leave the studio bareheaded or empty-handed because you will be taking with you the mementos, of course, of those newspapers that were published on the very day that you were born and the runway travel alarm clock. So thank you for coming along. You've been great contestants. It was good fun to see you. Thank you. But now it's time to see if Granville has what it takes to take off from the runway. Actually, it occurs to me at this stage, Granville, before we play this last round, that you've got a bit of time on your hands because you want a travel alarm clock, a digital clock alarm and radio, and, of course, that carriage clock. But the one clock you have to worry about now is that one up there on the runway. It shows 75 seconds. That is the time that you have to answer as many questions correctly as you can. Each time you get three right, you will win yourself a runway prize. If you get all nine questions right, then you'll win those travel vouchers which you can spend on a holiday anywhere you like in the world. Do you understand? Right, your first destination is going to be Belgium. The very best of luck. Can we please now start the clock now? From which country does the King of the Belgium's wife, Fabiola, come? It's Spain. With how many other countries does Belgium have land borders? Three. No, it's four. What do we call the Dutch-speaking inhabitants of Belgium? Wallon. No, it's Flemings. After Brussels, what's the largest city in Belgium? Us. It's Antwerp. Which Belgian writer created Inspector Maigret? Simonin. Correct. Which Belgian port is linked by canal with Bruges? Pass. Zeebrugge. Which colony, now called Zaire, became independent of Belgium in 1960? Belgian Congo. Correct. Where were the Olympic Games held in 1920? Are you going to pass? pass? It was Antwerp. Which Brussels football club won the Cup Winners' Cup in 1976 and 1978? Pass. Anderlecht. Which Belgian driver won Le Mans six times? It was Jackie... Yeah. No, it was Jackie X. Which large forest runs from South Belgium into France and Luxembourg? The Bourges? No, it's the Ardennes. How was King Albert of Belgium accidentally killed in 1934? Pass. In a mountaineering accident, what's the Belgian national airline called? It's Sabina. Which Belgian surrealist artist? Oh, dear. I think I hate Belgium now, Granville. It's obviously not your specialist subject, is it? No. no. Well, very bad luck. And listen, I do sympathise, because I know that when you're sitting there under the lights, you know, and the clock's ticking away in front of you, it can really get to you, can't it? Especially if you have a run of not being able to answer the question. Yeah. Bad luck. Never mind. You got through. You were the one who sat there in front of the runway. It's a tough job, and you've proved that it's a tough job this morning. Thanks very much indeed, Granville, for coming along and being a sterling competitor on runway. <laughs> Never mind, you didn't take off, but tomorrow morning we'll have three new contestants who will be trying their hands in runway. I hope you can join us to watch. If you can, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.